when I'm talking about redemptive love, I'm not talking about precise definitions. I'm not talking about theology. I'm talking about an actual real experience, a, a quality of consciousness that is inherent, although often latent, in human beings, but nonetheless it is inherent within human beings. It is inherent within existence itself, this redemptive quality of love, that when we experience that quality of love, the redemptive quality of love, of love it, makes, it, it makes one feel, it makes one experience a deep sense of wholeness, a deep sense of uh, forgiven, forgivenness, a deep sense of uh, that in the very place that we were afraid to look, in the very place where often the deepest wounding is, uh, in that very place can be the avenue through which, the portal through which, we connect with this, this deep sense of, of a kind of love that seems to clean, cleanse it all away. I'm not saying that essentially anybody needs to have anything cleansed away. But I'm saying, uh, but just to tell somebody you don't, your essential nature is whole and complete and it doesn't need to be cleansed or forgiven. Or, you know, to say that to somebody or even for somebody to believe that doesn't necessarily deeply, dip, deeply shift the pattern, the pattern of, uh, of uh, feeling as if there's something wrong, the pattern of inadequacy. And think of all the compensations that we human beings do uh, to cover over the inadequacy, you know, whether it's trying to be successful, whether it's trying to, to win, whether it's trying to become known, whether it's trying to become loved, whether it's trying to become uh, agreed with, uh, listened to, uh, um, I could go on and on. If you just, you could imagine in your own being all the compensations that human beings utilize to cover over the sense of kind of essential inadequacy. It's, it's an immense drive in human beings. And it's, an, it's a primary cause of sorrow, of suffering. Because our, the mind will often sift through the strata of a lifetime and pick out those events that seem to confirm the inadequacy and it will tend to filter out those events that do not confirm it, which just adds to the pain because your lifetime, your, the experiences you have, uh, the mind will tend to pick out those experiences which seem to confirm a deep sense of essential inadequacy, essential flawedness, and really, to a large extent, discount um, those life experiences that might show otherwise. So to open to, to experience this particular quality of love that is in, it is in the fabric of existence. It's in the fabric of your existence. It's in the fabric of the existence of the world. It's in the fabric of existence as such, this quality of a redemptive love, a kind of experience of love that reminds you of a kind of essential wholeness, completeness, um, which actually allows you to experience a tremendous intimacy with life. A unity with life. 
It's it's impossible for inadequacy to become unified with anything other than inadequacy. But this quality of love, this particular dynamic, uh, energetic of redemptive love, has a way of cutting right through that sort of wounding. It's an illusion. Uh, all sense, all inadequacy, essential inadequacy, the belief of that is illusory. But nonetheless, just because something an illusion doesn't mean you don't experience it very deeply. But redemptive love has a power to cut right through that illusion, to dissipate it um, in a very powerful way, very potent way. So we want. I want to talk a little bit about what helps us to open to that that quality of, of love, that quality of intimacy, because love is also intimacy. It's, clo- it's closeness. It's union. It's, and the deepest form of union is, of course, um, oneness. 